so much during the past few days to uh, help us coordinate this marvellous air display for you. Without the uh, support of so many uh, local sponsors and supporters, absolutely impossible to mount such uh, an adventurous air show as this. And we let them fly off to the wild the Russians admitted defeat. But right now, running in from the left, please welcome from the BBMF as well, the fighter pair. So, ladies and gentlemen, to our front, the beautiful, evocative, and the incredible Battlefield Memorial Flight, the living, flying memorial to past sacrifice for our freedom. In our front, Arrigan in the lead, the Spitfire, with its D-Day stripes mirroring the uh, stripes on the Dakota, moving to our front and centre. the very pinnacle of design of their day. The two aircraft flown expertly today by two very lucky and honoured gentlemen, Flatton and Debris in the Spitfire, and Flight Lieutenant Mark Sugden, Suggs as he's known, breaking off right in the Hurricane. The hurricane aircraft now taking its turn. Right. From the right then, the Hurricane running in now. Beautiful aircraft design. Mirrored the sound of that Merlin engine. The Hurricane aircraft rather appropriately debuting. First, it was uh, designed and built in the uh, early mid 30s. Uh, built for war, designed for grace and power. Part of the Britain's front line defence in 1940, played a major part throughout the war and the victory of 1945 afterwards. So the Spitfire out to here, you can see that elliptical wing. This is a Spitfire Mark 5B. The B wing actually indicates the level of armament, in fact, with a variety of heel, that engine spur, spool up, a wonderful Merlin. Mark V, a very powerful development. So, flight to Andy Priest, just wonderful uh, topside pass there, just coming up to our left hand side there. And it's quite clear, it really does illustrate those D Day invasion white stripes. Again, all aircraft flying over Normandy, the troops under immense pressure in life threatening situations. And it's important to delineate friendly aircraft from enemy aircraft. And those white stripes beautifully stand out for us all today as they would have done uh, all those years ago on the June beaches of 1944. is uh, the Spitfire AB910, a beautiful iconic aircraft, very popular on the circuit. It's a wonderfully uh, powerful, pocketed version of the Mark, uh, this aircraft. This indeed aircraft is painted up and flew indeed 143 operational missions in a remarkable wartime career. Spanned almost three years in operations, Initially allocated to Treble 2 Natal Squadron in North Weald, Natal being a South African squadron, aircraft damaged during forced landing, reallocated to 130 Squadron of Cornwall flying convoy protection patrols and escorting daylight raids, transited to cross to an Eagle Squadron, a US Air Force Spitfire unit at Biggin Hill, flying 29 operations with this unit. And currently is painted up as uh, AB910. And flew in fierce aerial battle in support of Operation Jubilee, the Dieppe Raid. Continued, this aircraft continued to fly operationally until July 1944, serving with a number of other squadrons and indeed serving with a 402 Royal Canadian Air Force Squadron. Flew patrols 
patrols and covered the D-Day invasion beachheads on the 6th of June 1944 and afterwards. From there after it was given a break and this aircraft was rested and ultimately found its way into the hands of the Babylon Moro flight in the early 90s. Wonderful aircraft, incredible history, a remarkable career commemorating now as a living memorial. Good chance now, hopefully a bit of a top wing flash from Andy Priest as he turns away from us showing that elliptical wing. The elliptical wing was uh, and the indeed Supermarine Spitfire development by incredible aircraft designer by the name of RJ Mitchell. Sadly, didn't get to see the final iterations. Some 20,000 Spitfires eventually designed, modified, improved and built over 12 years, some 20,000 built and flying all the way until the early 50s. The uh, RJ Mitchell, sadly, he died in 1937, and it was his, uh, his design assistant, Joe Smith, who actually took on much of the design and improvement work and kept the Spitfire a living, breathing, modified prototype. Again, the power of the engine increased threefold from 1,000 to over 2,000 horsepower in the version of the Griffin. Each of the wings showed a development change in both power, speed, and packing a punch in terms of lethality. These aircraft were meant to be lethal, fast, and powerful, countering incredible advances and designs, incremental gains that their enemies over the water were making in terms of the Messerschmitt and Focke-Wulf fighter threat. Uh, number, the final version of the uh, Spitfire, the Seafire Mark 24, again, these aircraft are incredibly powerful, very difficult, and indeed by the end demonstrating counter-rotating propellers, huge increases in air direct speed, the aircraft just touching the, nudging the edge of the speed of sound, again incredibly dangerous for the pilots to fly as they approach the sound barrier, requiring all sorts of research, modifications, the aircraft barely recognisable from their initial RJ Mitchell design back in 1938. Spitfire now running in. Andy Priest is a former navigator, then became a Harrier pilot. This evocative handover, the BBMF, so wonderfully flying. Andy Priest has been flying with the team a good few years now. It's an absolute thrill and joy to be flying this living memorial. And the Spitfire handing over to its inimitable counterpart, the Hurricane, flown by Flight Ted Mark Sunder. Flight Ted Mark Sunder just joining the team. He's going to be taking over from uh, Flight Ted Mark Diskman as a future leader of the BBMF. Again, they serve a long apprenticeship learning how to fly these historical aircraft, living memorials, jewels in the crown of the Royal Air Force. It takes time, it takes immense care and skill and talent. And Suggs will be taking over in a good few years after Disco, who takes over after squadron leader Andy Milliken, the current boss. But here now, stage and fronter, front and centre is the Hurricane. See, slightly straighter wing, that plan form, the design. It represented the early mid-30s uh, version, uh, the Hawker uh, Aircraft Company, Sydney Cam. Uh, these aircraft, a very sturdy design, reflect, reflected the new design for speed and power, the single monoplane, loud armament embedded in the wings. Engine and speed coming from the Merlin engine. Again, much of it Again, from the Supermarine Company with the uh, winning of the Schneider Trophy in the late 20s and 30s, this speed of power translated into lethality into war aircraft. The Hurricane, again, easier to design and make, largely as it was of wooden construction. This meant, in fact, actually much of the skills of the workforce currently in the UK in the late 30s were able to be taught to use. The metal-skinned Spitfire, very difficult to produce and make, took many years to develop and build. Slightly due to the greater numbers, the ease of construction, the Hurricane was in greater numbers, some 60-40 ratio in terms of kills at the start of the Second World War. And the Hurricane had the greater number of kills in the Battle of Britain between July and October 1940. Uh, one of the squadrons based at Royal Air Force Northolt, 303 squadron, the Polish squadron, had the highest number of kills in the first half. And the Hurricane then, a Powerful aircraft, sturdy gun platform, nice and steady for the pilots to fly and try and aim while flying at 400 miles an hour. This would be the view that Hun would have as so the Hurricane bore down upon the bombers. Spitfires going for the fighters to try and coordinate their teamwork. Hurricane was a 
favourite amongst the ground crew as well. Again, many of the bullets and attacks actually went through the canvas and wood of the Hurricane, not hitting structures or cutting uh, valuable uh, bits of equipment. The Hurricane was therefore easy to repair, quick to get back on the front line, repaired and back to peace. This aircraft, LF363, is one of the early Mark II ones and has been kept for posterity indeed. Uh, and it was kept by the Hawker Company as one of the last ever built and kept for the Royal Air Force of the UMF for the nation for us to see today. So here we are, ladies and gentlemen, the last pass. Let's hear it for the fight to pair. A roll off the top, a victory roll. Mark Sugden and Andy Priest, the Battle Group of Morrow Fight. Big cheer and a wave from Bournemouth. Thank you. Yes, and thank you so much for your appreciation. Absolutely phenomenal statistics, of course, from the Battle of Britain in 2003. So coming down now, he's winding this aircraft really, really tightly in a number of turns during that. He's winding the G up at the same time. The pressure's really building in his face and in his body. He's strengthening his muscles around his stomach and around his thighs to stop the blood uh, running down to his toes. And he's pulling now up in about a 5 to 6 G. Very shortly, there he goes. On comes the pressure. In comes the roll. Out goes the flick. In comes the start of what is a massively exhausting display. Looking absolutely magnificent uh, with this colour scheme, an outstanding pilot, outstanding machine. The history, though, goes back many, many years indeed. The uh, Pitts itself, designed by Curtis Pitts, first flew in 1945, would you believe? This one is only uh, one of 30 aircraft an S2S ever built. Uh, most were certified production aircraft, but a few, including this one, were built from factory kits. is Richard, down comes a bit more G, out goes tumble in over the top, goes a spin, a flick air, flicking the controls violently across the cockpit to achieve uh, these particular manoeuvres, and now into a mind-splittingly inverted 360 degree turn, controlled entirely with the rudder. Very exhausting uh, part of the display, and uh, you can see all these guys get really bored flying straight and level. They're uh, cleared to a whole bucket load of different manoeuvres that they put in place, loving every single minute of it. They just uh, enjoy themselves, they check the wind, check the sky available, check the uh, display area, and then they just put together the sequence that they think will be the most fun, entertaining, and I know from a fact, at the end of this, utterly exhausting. At the top there again, putting in a few uh, tumble, well, a few flick rolls and tumbles, and uh, now coming back round indeed, just can and the whole scenery back in perspective again. This aircraft purpose built and designed for uh, competitive air show aerobatics and uh, really taking uh, the world by storm from the 1960s through the 70s, made famous by our own British as well, uh, the likes of Brian Lacomba and the Rothmans uh, team way back when. But actually, it was a lady uh, back in the uh, late uh, 40s, early 50s, Betty Skelton, who had a little aircraft. She called the Little Stinker uh, that really uh, made the mark in the world. But this is a very specially modified aircraft because now you can see it hovering in the sky. And this just shows you what an excess of energy and power Richard has built into this aircraft. This uh, six-cylinder, 8.5-litre engine producing 300 horsepower is absolutely magnificent with just a flying weight of 750 kilograms you can see why it is able to remain in that hover position
She's got a top speed of over 200 miles an hour, capable of pulling plus six and minus five. Uh, that is a big extreme. Of course, you're just weighing one G at the moment, sitting or lying on the beach, all very comfortable. Imagine somebody pressing in your head six times your body weight, trying to push you through planet Earth. That is very uncomfortable. But turn it upside down and do the reverse, uh, pushing all the weight away from your head to your feet. Very, very unpleasant indeed. by diagonal steel where a wires to give it rigidity. Uh, but you put it in the hands of a man who's been so passionate about flying, himself an ex-Royal uh, Air Force pilot, a tornado man, him, and uh, now uh, flying airliners, well, as much as he can when not doing uh, crazy antics like this at air shows around the world. Now, absolutely mind-numbing uh, manoeuvre here as he... Uh, goes inverted and pushing the aircraft up now and all the blood rushing uh, to his head and it's uh, really, really unpleasant indeed. He's tough enough for all the other uh, aspects of this aircraft as well though with the titanium landing gear uh, reducing the weight. Use cowling system, a new induction system performance fuel injection of course you have to keep the fuel pumping neat bit of sliding going on in the air there as I look up to see what he's doing and uh, also uh, a different uh, exhaust and smoke system as well all the smoke we use in these air shows though is generally uh, environmentally friendly it's baby oil called uh, Ondina or Cristal and while he's climbing up there in a steady RPM state he's also actually believe it or not just cooling the engine at the same time because now he's about to perform his tower of power and that's when he's going to convert all this altitude he's just gained into a really really dramatic uh, dive down to uh, the sea below where he'll wind the aircraft up the smoke comes on he's just testing that for now that says i'm ready to go into the next maneuver he'll be coming down now at maximum speed close to 200 miles an hour he'll wind it up here get those turns on as the g turn as the turn it rate increases the g increases his mind goes into super spin like a mad washing machine and then he'll pull up using all that speed and energy into his next round of revolution and ahead stall turns flick rolls and gyroscopic maneuvers here they come Having achieved that, he's still got an excessive power allowing him to hover the aircraft miraculously in mid-air. Now he doesn't just get bored with doing aerobatics and uh, flying around a straight line. Actually, he's working on putting two little mini jet engines on this aircraft as well. Well, it's not going to be this one. It's another one he's working on in the United States. And uh, I'll tell you what, he does most of the work himself. He puts incredible uh, investment, his own money, and an awful lot of time into developing uh, these aircraft. And he's all for taking it beyond the envelope that it's designed for. until he was a relatively grown-up uh, individual uh, into his uh, early 50s. Uh, but having uh, started that, of course, uh, he just got uh, a rush of blood and now he, you just can't stop it. He's a charming chap, totally dedicated and very, very professional. Coming towards the uh, tail end of his display now, he'll just hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. There it is, and then he just pulls the aircraft back over the top 
winding it up now using a bit more of that energy gets in a couple of flicks and rolling up winding it up now and this is really going bananas it's very hard then to get your composure you just have to refocus on the instrument and the horizon He doesn't just snap it once, he'll snap it several times going in now, he'll just uh, curl it around, oh he's going to push it over the top this time, sliding it slightly, and then putting it into another spin. stuff very very unpleasant takes years of practicing even he admits that he has to train and work very hard physically to uh, maintain and I hear him calling now for the last pass and I have little doubt it will be his traditional high alpha knife edge pass an absolutely outstanding camera opportunity for you he'll be looking out of the top of his canopy though towards you so once again uh, do give him your appreciation won't you a massive big uh, mexican wave from bournemouth pier right down to boscombe pier as well as he comes by in this extraordinary maneuver and it's achievable because the fuselage is designed also to create and generate lift as well as the wings stand by So here we go, here's the start of it. Uh, this is Richard Goodwin in the muscle bike lane. Give him a massive wave and farewell, Bournemouth. This guy working his absolute heart out to entertain you. Absolutely outstanding, and I just think just a gorgeous aircraft. I was working with Richard out in the Middle East a couple of years ago in a competition we were doing there, and he just wowed the crowds and uh, wowed the judges too. He came away with a couple of top prizes. Very talented pilot, and uh, certainly he's been flown, as you mentioned, all through his service career, but actually took it up fairly late in life, and I think maybe inspiration to all. Yes, as I mentioned. <laughs> Uh, ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce to you the 2018 Chinook Display. Let's get our pitches back down now. The crew give uh, give the crew a big wave as they do a 90 degree breakaway to crowd left. The Chinook size often hides its sheer ability and power, but we hope you will be impressed by the aircraft's performance uh, during the display. impressive place that noise as it goes round the uh, goes round its turn. The 2018 Chinook Display Team pilot and aircraft captain this year is Flight Lieutenant Stu Kinno Kiniston. Uh, Kinno is a 27 Squadron operational pilot and training captain. Joined the Air Force in 2007 and posted to Chinooks in 2011. Uh, since then, he's been flying Chinooks around the world on various exercises and operations, including the Falkland Islands, four operational detachments to Afghanistan, and has amassed over 1,300 hours on type. Aircraft now performing its first uh, pedal turn to crowd left. Uh, this maneuver pitching up to about 45 degrees nose up before uh, pushing in the pedal, uh, which uh, obviously just moves the, uh, the nose of the aircraft back round. The aircraft now will be flown left to right down the crowd line, uh, performing the roller coaster. So two nose overs, hopefully halfway through being crowd centre. At this point again, pitching those up to 45 degrees with Donna's pattering the uh, AI for Kino, so he can keep his eyes out for the manoeuvre. That's the first of the two nose overs for the roller coaster. And as he goes past crowd centre, you'll see him pitch those back up to 45 degrees. as he goes over the second nose over. Joining Kino in the cockpit today is the other co-pilots, uh, Flight and Andy Donners Donovan. Andy joined the Royal Air Force in 2009 um, before qualifying on Chinooks in 2015 where he was posted to the Mighty 27. 
Uh, so he's joined the squadron, he's flown four, uh, three types of aircraft, well, three marks of aircraft, I should say, the Mark 4, 5, and now 6 Alpha, uh, in the United States, Sweden, France, and Germany, in addition to multiple UK exercises. Uh, in late 2017, he deployed with Keno to be part of 13 10 flight in the Falkland Islands. The aircraft now manoeuvring over to the uh, crowd right, just performing a wing over around the, uh, the boats you can see out in the bay. Uh, Donna, today we'd also like to uh, put a special uh, hello and welcome out to Sally, Andy, Steve and Peter who are all in the uh, crowd watching today and supporting the team. You can obviously hear the aircraft come back in and uh, we should get another good snapshot of, our, uh, of the hashtag blade snap as it goes past crowd centre. This time performing a offset, a 60 degree offset wing over to a crowd centre. Gives you a perfect opportunity now also as he goes round to look at it from a, uh, a rather unusual angle. As he comes back round the far side, you'll have a good uh, top-down profile of the aircraft as it comes round for anyone with your cameras that are ready. is operated under joint helicopter command in support of all three services and UK resilience tasking. It remains on high demand due to its large cabin, capable of carrying up to 40 fully equipped troops. Uh, we also have many internal load configurations which, uh, which can include carrying uh, vehicles to freight and palletized cargo. We can hoist people on and off the aircraft uh, with the, uh, the hoist that can be fitted to the right hand side, uh, making us available for SAR ops should, we, uh, should be required. Uh, and also free fuel parachuting, which some people may have seen earlier in the season, uh, following us on our uh, Facebook page. The shirt can be flo also flown to remote locations and set up as a refueling site for other aircraft uh, and can be configured for medical emergency response, uh, a role which the force fulfilled under, uh, under fire in Op Peric in Afghanistan. Forming the last nose over of the display, pulling the nose up to 45 degrees as it back down to 45 degrees, nose down. Watching him fly left to right, Kino now position the aircraft to the proud right uh, where he perform a pedal turn again. During this next manoeuvre, crowd right for the pedal turn, Kino will lose sight of the ground as he pulls up to 45 degrees, nose up, and will be listening solely to Donis in the left hand seat, pattering the AI for him to, uh, uh, to keep an eye on what's going on. Uh, apologies, that's the team actually just uh, performing a wing over to grab right there. Uh, Kino will be running the aircraft back in now, putting it back down to 150 feet on the uh, for the crowd line, where he'll do a 360 degree flat turn, uh, giving you another perfect opportunity to see one, see the underside of the aircraft and the top side down once he uh, gets to the far side. Quick stop. The aircraft 
tail come to the hover and uh, Camilla turned the tail right 270 degrees so it can face the crowd. In the back of today's cab we have uh, Sergeant Gav Anderson. Uh, Ando joined the Royal Air Force as a direct entrant, a weapon system operator in 2009 after being streamed rotary. He completed his multi-engine training at RA Shawbury and was subsequently posted to B-Flight on the 27 Squadron. During his, during his time at RA Podium, Ando has amassed nearly, in fact, Ando now has amassed 1,000 hours on the Chinook and is deployed overseas with 27 to many areas of the world, including Afghanistan, Jordan, the United States, and the Mediterranean, plus the Falkland Islands. If you now look out towards the crowd, uh, sorry, apologies, if the crowd now looks out towards the Chinook, you'll, uh, you'll see Ando waving our two iconic uh, orange hands. I assure you the crowd, the, uh, the crew can see you, so please give them a big wave back as you pour. It's probably going to be the world's slowest Mexican wave as you come down the, uh, come down the beach today. as he gets patted around the uh, manoeuvre. point 
back at the crowd. This is one last opportunity for uh, the pilots at the front to have a good look at the crowd and appreciate you all coming out today. It's about the only chance the, uh, the two guys at the front really get to have a look at the crowd, so please give them a big wave, folks. Uh, we really do appreciate your support. And there we have it, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Uh, there's the crew coming to the hover. One final time, your chance to show their appreciation by waving. That's them com completing the over-the-shoulder of the departure, again used operationally around the world before he then departs off to uh, the right. Uh, and just give one last, uh, one last opportunity to say thank you very much for turning out and supporting us today. We're down in the RF village for the rest of the day and tomorrow. Please come and say hello. And uh, as I can't sign off my usual because there's no jets finishing, uh, I'd just like to point out, thank you very much for coming. And because uh, fixed wings are boring. <laughs> yeah, 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 we've heard it all. ...for an exhilarating high G display here at Bournemouth today. And please welcome the Blades over 16. And they've arrived in pyramid formation and for their first manoeuvre they're going to pull up and perform the Manta Loop. And the two on the left and right will perform opposition stool turns and one and four pushovers. And this is dedicated to Ian Duncombe and the Willow Foundation. This is the Falling Angels. Again, like I said, please do send in any photos. This is a perfect photo opportunity right now as they head towards us. Get ready for a high G manoeuvre, our first break of the display, our iconic break. Get ready for the crossfire break. And if we stick with the aircraft on the left and right now, the display you just seen. First synchronized. And now the pair will call visual on each other, and they're going to cross in the centre of the display line at a closing speed of 350 miles per hour. And again, if we look, they're also going to cross in the centre of the display line, and they're going to pull up into the vertical. Which is as possibly loudly as you can. I'm going to count you in as they pull up. Wait for the engines to go quiet. Five, four, three, two, one. And. Loudly cheer, we can do better than that, the pilots want to hear you. That's brilliant, thank you very much. And if we stick with the aircraft on the right now, this is a series of ratchet rolls, which are point hesitations and reversals. The Gerald Cooper solo lasts for around 1 minute 30 seconds. And each time it changes, so I'm seeing everything new as you are today. Gerald Cooper is the most successful UK aerobatic pilot. He reigns in the top five in the world. And since 2009, he's been the national unlimited aerobatic champion. So we're delighted to have him on board for a first season here with us with the blades. And he's going to pull up and perform some gyroscopic manoeuvres as well, throwing some blade slides. He's added something special to our display this year. And Gerald began his flying in 1989. As I said, he's the most successful UK aerobatic pilot ever. And Andy Evans Blade 1 has just called 30 seconds on Gerald here. And that means he has just 30 seconds to finish his solo routine before the other three come back. But if we look to our left, we'll see Blaze 1, 2 and 3 approaching Smoke On. And they're going to perform a manoeuvre here, which we've been performing through hammering hard on the rudder. This is crazy. And this is indeed our most photographed manoeuvre. So again, any snaps you've got today here at the beautiful Bournemouth, please do send in at the Blaze team to win a chance, for a chance to win a Blaze goodie bag. And we'll see Gerald here corkscrewing around Blade 1, 2, 3. There really are some beautiful photo opportunities here as the sun is setting on the Blades team. And I'd like to take this moment here to thank all of our sponsors for the 2018 season, including our primary sponsor, Aerobytes, Lee Cables, 
Mario and Everett Fund and Ashton Martin Cambridge. We couldn't do what we do without you, so thank you very much for being on board. And this next manoeuvre is dedicated to our primary sponsor. As the team pull up into the loop, they're going to come back down for the Aerobikes box bend. A wonderful photo opportunity for the underneath of the aircraft. Please get your cameras ready for the Aerobikes box bend. One, two, and three will continue, and they're going to all pull up into the vertical and still turn to our left. And this is for our iconic Blades Hammerhead. So you just heard Andy Evans call line of stand formation there as one will line up behind the other. And they're going to pull up into the vertical and each aircraft will wait for the one in front to hit a 45 degree angle before beginning their roll beneath. And this is the Spitfire roll. We have three different types of display depending on the cloud base. We have a full, a rolling and a flat. Today we are performing our full because as you can see there are no clouds in the sky. So we hope you are enjoying the weekend of the season. So let's make it a good one. And as the team approach in diamond formation, this is a new manoeuvre for the 2018 season. All four aircraft will perform synchronised aileron rolls for you here. a racing team in the Red Bull Air Race Masterclass Series with one of our pilots, Ben Murphy, flying as our pilot. 14 of the best pilots around the world compete, flying through pylons just 25 feet above the ground at speeds of 370 kilometers per hour. It is truly breathtaking to watch and we had our best result in Russia in Kazan last weekend where we finished fifth. It's unprecedented for the rookie season. This is the Blade Snake. Chris Norton, who had a crazy idea to fly people in these extra 300s. And from then, it's gone from strength to strength. We now are 2XL Aviation Limited with 10 sub companies. We have over 30 aircraft and over 400 employees, F1 simulator, fine dining, and a private champagne display with the blades. So please do check that out www.theblades.com. And now, please get ready for our second break of the display. This is the fan break. Ow. And if we stick with the two aircraft together, they're going to pull up and perform the Blades Heart. And we'd like to dedicate this to our charity partner, the RAF Benevolent Fund. But also to Alan and Mary Ellen, who actually got engaged at one of our corporate days earlier on this year. And they are here today watching. So again, relive that moment. It was a wonderful moment. And congratulations on your engagement. opportunity so please do send them in at the blaze team via twitter for a chance and that was james mcmillan calling the manoeuvres there he's also new to the team this year 
He's an ex-Red Arrow, an ex-Harrier pilot, and most recently an ex-Typhoon pilot at RAF Coningsby. He's been an absolute pleasure to train this year. As you can see, he's very skilled in flying the extra 300s. And they're going to pull back round again and cross in the centre of the display line at 350 miles per hour. Get ready for Kirsty and James. This is a check term meaning either headache or hangover, which I'm sure you all can appreciate why after watching that one. And now if we look out into the distance, we'll see you before you here at Bournemouth. As they pull up, wait for them to come back down and perform the twin knife edge spins. So please do visit www.theblades.com to find out more information about coming to fly with the Blades team. We also are running a fundraising campaign with the RF Benevolent Fund here this weekend. We're selling sticks of rock for two pounds. And on the back of those, we have left four winning tickets to come and fly with the Blades. So for just two pounds, you could you could experience this for yourself. So please do visit the RF Village and pop down to the RF Benevolent Fund tent to buy your two pound stick of rock. We had our first winner two weeks ago at Eastbourne. I'm sure there must be a lucky winner here at Bournemouth here this weekend. And again, this is Gerald Cooper's second solo routine of the display. He's performed a couple of figures of eight, and he'll throw in some hesitations and some tumbles. And again, this solo lasts for around one minute and a half as well, as the other three reform eight. As I said, leaving the team this year, we have Andy Evans in Blade 1 position. He's been with the team since 2006. He's flown all positions now, but it is his first year leading the team. He has over 2,500 hours in the extra 300, making him one of the most experienced pilots in this aircraft in the world. And he's done a fabulous job of choreographing this uh, routine for you here today. And if we look to our right, we will see him approaching. And behind, James and Kirsty. Blade 2 and 3 are working extremely hard here to match each other at the top and bottom of each roll to make this look as seamless as it does. And that's Kirsty Murphy at the back. She's been with the team for three years now. She's an ex-Tornado pilot, but most importantly, she's an ex-Red Arrow. She's actually the only ever female Red Arrow pilot. So we are delighted to have her on the team. And Gerald, through the back, will add the fizz to the champagne split. Thank you very much indeed, Annie Stone there, and also a special thanks to Createful, uh, who these sponsors 